Williams was the king. Over the course of, you know, 50 some years, guys like us had been always the, the best at what they did. We've been getting beat up pretty badly on a regular basis from management saying we're not selling any games. And if you guys don't come up with a way to change that, we're throwing you all out of work and we're closing the division. Uh, George and I mocked up a model of what we called a hollow pin. And upper management basically came in and they were blown away. All these ideas, one after another, from the entire engineering department and people were smiling again and high-fiving each other. And Neil stood there and he looked up and he said, I see the future of pinball and it's starting right here. We said, you know, we have to get everything right because there's no second chance. A lot of pinball people, the whole idea of a TV monitor and a pinball machine is abhorrent. I've seen this product, I don't like it, it's a video game, this isn't pinball. They thought we were actually taking pinball and just destroying it. When people saw this game, there wasn't any, you know, why'd you do this, why'd you do that? It was like, this is just unbelievable. They thought that they had, you know, reinvented the wheel. And in many respects, they did. Our combined company was a profitable slot machine company and a dying pinball company. As far as Wall Street was concerned, the slot machine company couldn't be valued the way they should be because they had this anchor ball and chain. One of my sources had said, Monday, it's over. And I, and I, I was incredulous. Everyone was, was in awe. They couldn't, under, they couldn't understand why it happened or here we'd just done this thing that from all that we could tell was, was a total success. Why would they do that?